and welcome everybody. So today we're going to create a new game. Start by deleting your Scratch Cat Sprite and naming your project. Remember, always name everything. It makes it a lot easier later in the game. And once you've named your game, here's my Skyflyer. You're going to create your main sprite and your obstacle sprites. Now I've sped this up a lot. Use the line drawing tool. Zoom in really close so you can add as much detail as you can. Make the line very thin and then use the paint bucket to fill in the shape. If you make the shape a lot larger or the sprite a lot larger, it's easy to enlarge or reduce later on by using the enlarging or reducing tool. And once you have finished your sprites, time to make your backgrounds. Now I'm just quickly going to make my three leveled backgrounds. Blue background, white fluffy clouds, type level 1, name the level, start a game by create new background. Keep them simple. You can always change them at a later date, but just to start the game and get the coding all sorted, keep it simple. Makes it much easier in the long run. Once you've made the backgrounds for your levels, it's time for you to make the start screen and with that also goes the start button. Now I have used the same sort of color scheme, just with a simple blue background, white lettering and written the name of my game. I am going to go back and change this later on, but to start with the main point of what I'm doing is getting a game created, so I'm not worried about the aesthetics as much as I will be later on. And that's the same with my start sprite. I've simply created a new sprite, I'm drawing a black circle, and then on the inside I'm going to write the words start. And once we get this start screen, start button, as well as the level backgrounds and the main sprites done, we can really get into coding our game, which is the main point of what we're after today, to create a working game. So let's start by putting some code on our start button. We've placed it in the right position. We're going to go to events and we're going to add three events right from the start. When the flag is clicked, when backdrop switches to start, and when the sprite is clicked. Now with all sprites, when the flag is clicked we want them to hide. That way we can give them conditions on what levels to start with. When the sprite is clicked we want it to hide but we want it to change backgrounds first and of course when the backdrop switches to start that's where we want the sprite to show and we're also telling it where to show. Quick simple start button done. Okay select your backdrops go to scripts and add the event when the flag is clicked. So every time the flag is clicked it will switch to the start screen. Now with our main sprites we want them to hide. Okay because it's going to the start screen and we don't want it there. So on your sprites, add the event when flag clicked and then when backdrop switches. And that's the backdrop you want it to turn up on, which with us is level 1. And just go to looks and you'll see hide for when flag is clicked and show for when the backdrop switches to level 1. Now you can take both of those bits of code and hover it over the other sprites and if we click on you'll see it copies of them across which is quite handy. So now our sprites know when to hide, when to show. We need to start looking at how we can get them to move. So for our main sprite we want to tell it where to start and how to move. So we're going to get it to move on the x-axis. So we need to start and go to x minus 1 50. Remember, minus is either down to the bottom of the screen or to the left, whereas a positive would be to the top or to the right. So it's always going to be set to x1 minus 150, and then we're going to do something quite tricky. We're going to get it to repeat until it's touching my other sprite, boom as I've called it, and we're going to get it to move along the x axis at minus 150. And we're going to set Y to mouse Y. So what that means is if we test the game, as I move my mouse up and down, the main sprite will move along that minus 150 X axis 
based upon where it's supposed to be. Okay, so now we're going to do some testing to make sure that everything we've set up so far is working. We click the flag, it goes to the start screen. When we click the start button, it switches to level 1 and the start button hides. When we move the mouse up and down, the main sprite, or the jet plane, moves up and down along that x-axis. We need to now get the rocket to move. Now, to get our missiles and other sprites to move, we need to create two variables. Select data, select make a variable for all sprites. We're going to create two variables. One is called score, and the second one will be called speed. Once you've, once you've created that, select your backdrops, go to the scripts. There you'll have when flag clicked, switch backdrop to start, and then you also have set score to zero and set speed to zero. We actually want the speed to be about minus five, but we'll change that a little bit later. So we've created the variables. Let's put some code onto that rocket to make it move. So we need to tell it where to go to. Now I want my rocket to start in the very center on the right every time. So that's the x coordinates of 240 and 0 is the center. But you see here when I click it, it starts there, it doesn't move. So I'm going to use a repeating tool, touching and change that to Skyflyer or the jet plane. And I'm going to get x to change by, not a number, but a variable. That's going to be speed. So if we test that again, you'll see that it's not moving because we set our variable to be 0. So we jump back into where we set it. There it is. Let's change speed to minus 5. So that means that it's going to move from the right to the left if it's on the x. It would go from the top to the bottom. And now that we're testing it, we see that it's moving it at a speed of minus 5. So we've got the sprite moving, but when it gets to the end of the screen, it's stopping. So what we need to do now is we need to add an extra piece of code. So we're going to go control, we're going to do another if then, and we're going to use a greater than, less than symbol. So we're going to bring down there and we're going to say x position. So if x position is greater than, of course, minus 240, that means it's going right off the edge. So if it gets to minus 240, we want it to change the x position to 240. So what's happening is it's going to one side of the screen, then jumping to the other side of the screen. Now what we're going to do now as well, we're going to set the y position when it resets itself, and we're going to put in a random number between minus 180 and 180. So that means that when it resets, it will go at a random position along the right hand side. And also, to make the game more playable, we're going to change the score by 1. If you see the test now, every time the rocket resets itself, the score is going up by 1. Exactly what we want it to do. So in essence now, we're at the point where we've got the game working. The rocket comes from the right to the left, it resets itself, and we have a start button. What we want to do now is we go back to the backdrops and to the script there, we're going to add a forever loop and an if then. And now we're going to say if the score equals. So let's bring across an equals block and put it in the if then block, and go back to data and take the score. So what we want to happen now is if the score equals a set number, I'm going to set it low, only on 5, but in a real game you make it much higher. If the score equals 5, we're going to switch the backdrop to level 2. And that way, when you get to a certain stage in the game, it's going to keep on going higher and higher, and harder and harder. Additionally, we're going to bring another data block and set the speed to minus 7. So that means when we're playing the game, if we get past 5 points, as you see what's going on here now, it's going to change the backdrop and also the speed of the obstacles you're trying to dodge will start moving faster. So that's that whole gamification and making the game more difficult and more challenging for the player. And right now we could stop and we've got a playable game. So we've reached the point in our game where it's working, it's playing, but now we can make it even better. So back on the backdrops, on the script there, we're going to add another if then and add another equals block within the if then. 
go to data and add the score and so when the score gets to let's say 10 but in a real game it'll be much higher we can look and change the backdrop to level 3 or night level as I've called it in this because it's a different backdrop and then again we'll make the speed higher so what we've done here is we've made three levels within the game and the speed and the difficulty gets much harder so that's quite interesting how can we even make it better so we'll just test it starting and we saw that by testing it, it goes from level 1 to level 2 to level 3 and it's working okay where to next well for me the next step I'm going to add is more obstacles so I'm going to speed this up but just like when you made the first obstacle you do the same thing Now, as you would have seen with those sprites, I just changed them so some came on certain different levels and head on others. So now what I'm going to do is add a new backdrop, call it you win, paint it black. And so now when I get to a certain point level, it goes to you win. So you know you've actually got to the end of the game. Now, I'm only having three levels. You can have 10, you can have 20, you can have as many as you want. There is no limit to this. So when we get to 20 points, changes to you win, and test the game. Seems to be working so far, and it will get more difficult as we get to level 5. But the one thing I'm not happy with is the next thing we're going to work on, and that is the start screen. I said we'd come back to it, and if we look at it now, it's just not that good. So using flaming text, I've chosen a text style. I've created a logo for my game and a new start button and downloaded them with a transparent background. I just take the start button I've created already, select it, delete it, and import in what I want to use. So in my downloads, here is my new start sprite. Simply start. Much nicer font and looks a whole lot better. And once I've got my start sprite, I'm going to go back to my start screen. I'm going to select the color and get rid of that simple text title and I'm going to insert my flaming text title much better looks so cool compared to what it was and it gives it that professional sort of flavor so now I've got my professional title I've got a professional start button I'm going to go to my original sprite my sky flower and I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to duplicate it now by doing this, I'm creating another sprite, which is exactly the same as the first one. But I really just want the image. So I've set my new duplicated sprite to show on the start screen, hide, when it goes to level 1, and I've enlarged it and put it in the right place. Now a few little aesthetics around the start screen, a few white fluffy clouds, like the rest of the game, and it's starting to look like a game I want to play. And also a quick jazz up of the new windscreen using flaming text again same color scheme new win time to play again and a last touch to the start screen my jet plane sprite I'm duplicating it and just changing the color of the exhaust now by throwing a piece of code on it that it will wait a second and it will change to the next costume when we see it it just makes it wobble and look a little bit cooler and finally we go to the project page we give some instructions let the gamer know how to play your game and make sure that if you've had some help from someone you've got some inspiration from somewhere give them credit in the notes and credits and make sure you share your game with others